Jace finds himself withdrawing from his hero role after using violence to stop Zorak. Can Jan's little brother find his way out of the darkness? Or will Space Ghost fall to a new villain without Jace's help? Let's find out in our review of Space Ghost number 6 from Dynamite Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Space Ghost number 6. This issue continues to prove this title is one of the best adaptations by Dynamite or any other publisher. Writer David Pepos delivers a healthy dose of action with the modern introduction of another classic Space Ghost villain while crafting a thoughtful character piece about Jace's struggles with the violence that comes with the job. This issue may not have the big spectacle of the previous arc, but it's a banger nonetheless. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened in the previous issue. When last we left Space Ghost, Jan and Jace in Space Ghost number 5, they defeated Zorak and prevented the cult of Lokar from bringing the all-consuming god into our universe. During the heat of battle, Jace was forced to resort to violence to save his family by shooting Zorak. The trauma from that act prompted him to quit being a hero for good. That brings us to the current issue, Space Ghost number 6. We begin with a prologue from six weeks ago. The malevolent Moltar receives an offer from Dr. Xander Ebal to provide a hefty fee to fund Moltar's experiments if the former can retrieve lucidium crystals in Contra Industries facilities. Moltar is all too happy to agree, both for the money and to satisfy his personal vendetta against Contra. David Pepos wastes no time using the prologue to set up an introduction to Moltar with an effective dialogue scene that sets the foundation for the upcoming conflict. If you have no memory of Maltar from the original Space Ghost cartoon, the first few pages give you everything you need to know with expert efficiency. This is as solid an introduction for an old but yet new character that you could possibly hope for. The comic leaps forward six weeks with a battle in progress between Space Ghost and Jan against Maltar after his latest raid on a Contra facility. During the battle, Moltar creates a diversionary attack on a nearby building to create a window for him to escape with the latest batch of crystals. Meanwhile, we see narration from Jace as he pens his feelings about shooting Zorak during the finale of the last arc. When each new crisis arises, Jace has been hanging back, believing his actions let everyone down. Although the two threads aren't directly connected, the fight between Space Ghost and Moltar and Jace's diary session, if you will, Pepos uses Jace's narration to further the story during the action between Space Ghost and Multar, which is a smart ploy to make the fight more meaningful than it is on the surface. Plus, Jace's narration gives readers insight into how deeply the fight with Zorak affected him. Later, Jan tries to cheer Jace up by acting silly and trying a few comedic bits out on him. When the humor doesn't work, she gives Jace a special project. She wants him to outfit the Phantom Cruiser with a new cannon that mimics the diverse capabilities of Space Ghost's wristbands. Elsewhere, Multar uses intel from his previous fight with Space Ghost to figure out how to melt through Space Ghost's force fields. Jen, as the older sister, handles Jace's trauma by showing him the worst way to get out of funk is to wallow in it. By creating a constructive distraction, one which he doesn't immediately accept, Jan creates an avenue for Jace to solve his own problem. This comic has a few moments of impressive maturity that you won't just get from typical sci-fi action fare. There's nothing wrong with sci-fi action, but when you have this kind of depth in character building, it really gives this entire comic more texture and more humanity than you'll get from action alone. The issue concludes with a rematch between Space Ghost and Moltar that gets too hot for our hero to handle on his own. Jace finding out the best way out of this problem is through, and a moment of tenderness between two characters who have a deep affection for each other. Overall, Space Ghost number 6 doesn't have the same big wow moments and spectacle of the previous issues, but that lack is more than made up for with a well-written character piece that shows how tough the hero's life can be and gives Jace a fair bit of impressive character growth on top. Let's switch gears a second and talk about the art. The art in this comic is fantastic. Jonathan Lau's artwork can't be beat, which is why he's one of the best artists Dynamite has on tap. Lau is a master at using deep, heavy shadows to pump up the drama, plus Lau's figure work and heavy, powerful lines are amazing. Let's switch gears and talk about a little historical context for this character who you may not recognize. If you're new to the Space Ghost mythology, Moltar is a fire-themed villain who first appeared in the Space Ghost cartoon. 
Moltar debuted in the episode titled The Ovens of Moltor, not to be confused with Moltar, The Ovens of Moltor, which first aired on December 31st, New Year's Eve, 1966. So this character, even though it might be the first time you're seeing him in this issue or this title or this series, has been around for nearly 60 years. Final thoughts, what do we think about Space Ghost number six? It eases back on the big action and the spectacle, which is okay, in favor of a surprisingly mature character piece that builds the bond between Space Ghost and Jace. David Pepos' setup and character building is 100% on point, and Jonathan Lau's artwork is nothing short of stunning. Therefore, Space Ghost number 6 earns a 9 out of 10. This issue shows how you can have a hard-hitting sci-fi adventure comic with thought-provoking character work. But what do you think? Have you been as impressed with Space Ghost as we are? Leave a thumbs up if you are and drop a comment below with which Hanna-Barbera adaptation Dynamite is mastering the best. It's between this one and Johnny Quest, so let's see what is your opinion about which one is better. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review. Check out the variant covers and preview pages and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.